Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the roots of my YouTube channel. I am pretty much well known for doing tutorials back then and that was a long time ago, like a couple years ago. And I used to do it for Minecraft, Minecraft servers and how to mod your game and stuff. And normally when a good opportunity presents itself to make a tutorial, I will take advantage because why not? And lately people have been asking me, Steven, I know you play Ark here and there. How do you make yourself a private server? How do you put yourself a password? And how do you just make yourself an unofficial server? Well, in this tutorial, I will show you how to do so in case you guys own this video game called Ark Survival Evolved. This is a video game, which is an indie game. I believe it's an alpha and no, it's in beta actually. And um, it's on sale right now. It's $20. It's a pretty fun game. A lot of people play it. A lot of my friends, a lot of my in my friends list uh, play it and own the game. So yeah, so I'm going to show you how to make a server super simple and all we're going to be doing is following these steps right here. So how about we get started? The first thing we're going to do is we're going to download Steam CMD, Steam Command, and we're going to put it inside a folder and we're going to make a folder right now. So if you just follow the, if you just follow my instructions, it's going to be super simple and this isn't going to intimidate you the entire list right here, this huge list. So how about we get started making ourselves a folder and start from number one. I'm going to create myself a new folder and this folder is where I'm going to host the server where I'm going to hold all of the files. You could have this on an external hard drive if you want to. I'm not entirely sure if you could have it on a USB, but I'm just going to make it right here on my C drive, my main computer drive, and I'm going to call it my arc server. I'm just going to have a folder just like this. Okay. Now that I have my arc server, I'm going to open this up and just leave it here on the side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this uh, steam CMD inside here when I download it from this website. So, here it is. This is where you're going to go. You click on the description. It's going to take you to my website and this is where I'm going to have all the links for you and pretty much everything you can need to uh, copy and paste with. So you're going to see this uh, website right here. It's probably going to scroll you down to the Windows section. So if you're Windows, here's the download. If you're Linux or Mac, keep scrolling down and you'll find instructions for those too. All right. So here is the Windows download. As you can see, it says Windows. What we're going to do is we're going to download it right here. All right. We're going to click download. We're going to uh, click save and here we go. This right here, this zip is going to be what we need in order to start the server process, the server hosting process, I guess. And here it is. So once we downloaded that, you're going to see it's inside a zip called Steam CMD. You're going to open that up and inside you're going to see that it says uh, Steam CMD executable. So you're going to need this, the .exe. You're going to drag that into my Arc server just like that. And that's all you need to do. That is step one. We are done with this step. Now that we have done that, we're going to run it, okay? So we're going to run it real quick. We're going to double click and it's going to download all of the uh, utilities and tools and files that you need in order to start hosting servers on Steam CMD. I'm going to go ahead and click run and then it's going to take a little second. It's going to download everything and uh, extract some packages and stuff and just wait for this to finish and then I'll be right back. All right, so now that it says it is finished, it's going to say right here, type quit to exit. We're going to go ahead and do so. We're going to spell quits. It's going to exit. And there you go. Here's a bunch of files. So now that Steam CMD has successfully installed all of the files, now what we need to do is we need to download all of the Arc server files. So what we need to do is go to step two, which is copy the command code right here, which will tell Steam CMD that we're going to be looking for Arc Survival's files, which is right here. This is their uh, Steam ID number 346110. I already put it in for you and it will download all of the files for you. So what you need to do is copy the line of code that's in my website, go to my Arc server uh, folder, which you have the Steam CMD files. You're going to make yourself a new text document just like this. And I'm going to call this text document the update server file because after you're done running this, it's going to be used to update your server. Every time there's a new update available for the video game, you know, because I think every week or every two weeks it updates with a new dinosaur, you might want to update your server as well. So I'm going to call this update server so you won't get confused. And typically I would use like bold words, like all caps so that it would stand out amongst all of these uh, other files, which you're never going to use. Anyways, what we're going to do is we're going to open this up and we're going to paste the command codes um, in you know, command code number one inside my website, and we're going to paste it right inside there. And you'll see that it says start whatever application, the, the Steam CMD with our username and password. And we're going to force the install into this 
particular directory, which we're going to make right now. And um, it'll also update to every time you launch it the second time. And this is the game ID, and that is it. And once it's done, it will quit. So as easy as that, we're going to be uh, messing around and tweaking some of these words. We're going to have to put our username, and it's not the same username that you use on right here, your display username. So mine is SCM owns as my display. That is not it. It's actually up here. It says SDOG Steven. That is my username. So you might have two different usernames, but the main one is the one next to your um, the very top right corner up here. That's your username. So I'm going to put in my username. So I'm going to put SDOG Steven. You're going to have to put yours and your password. And don't even worry. It's not going to be stolen or anything, but I'm not going to fill that in right here because I don't want anyone watching this video have my password. So we're going to have to make a new folder. And I like to make a new folder inside my arc server just to know where all the base files is at so I could change the config. So I'm going to make a new folder. I'm going to call it base files in all caps so i know exactly where all of the um files of arc server is going to be located it's not going to be scattered around here it's going to be inside this folder actually so i'm going to double click that and you could click up here to get the um directory of the base file folder that you just created so you could just copy this in and you could just paste it inside here if you want to mine's already set because i i pre made this before making the video but yeah so this is where the, the files are going to be downloaded into this folder base file. And this is where it's going to be updating too. So now I'm going to fill in the password real quick. So I'm going to move this outside the screen and I'll be right back once I finish that. All right. So now what we need to do is we got to make sure that this file, the update server. So I'm, I have it on the side of the screen here, but I'm going to show you. Uh, we got to make sure that our update server is on a batch file. So you want to make sure that you save it from text document to all files and put dot bat just like that dot bat and click save and you'll notice that immediately it converts itself into a windows batch file which is right there and now what we're going to be doing is we're going to double click this and now it's going to be logging in and just give it a second and look at this so um, if you have yourself the steam guard mobile authenticator app it will need the two-step verification code which will appear on your phone and i'm going to go ahead and take a picture so you can see that I got that on my phone. It'll show your code that you currently have and you have to quickly um, fill it in. So let's go ahead and just type in the code that I got minus four. So this is my code. It's four CCYW. I'm going to go ahead and press enter. And it's going to say, okay, uh, login verified and all that stuff. So it's going to be downloading all of the base files. Trust me, it is going to go into here the Steam app and it's going to be downloading the entire thing. As you can see, it is trying to pre uh, allocate over four I think this is four point no no 42 gigabytes yeah you're going to be downloading over 42 gigabytes guys yes it says right here step four is to wait to download over 40 gigs worth of server files so you're going to have to wait for this to finish and once that's done then I'll be right back so we can enter our next phase of the tutorial all right, guys. Well, that process will take around 30 to 40 minutes. So please wait for the entire 42 gigabytes to download. In case you don't have enough room on your computer, you might have to like look into sparing some room onto your hard drive for that because it is 40 gigs. So now that we have done that, all we have to do is we're going to be going to our base files, which is right here that we have created, which has all of our files that were downloaded. And if you were to right click and go to properties, it's probably going to say it's like 41 gigabytes. See, this is the entire server right here. This is your entire arc survival. So what we're going to be doing now is we're going to create ourselves a start server bat. So again, this file right here, which I renamed quickly, it was called update server. But this update server file, I, I renamed it quickly uh, because I was messing around with it, um, is what's going to update your server. So don't be confused. This, is, this does not start your server. You have to make another uh, command in order to start your server. So now that we have downloaded the server, now let's see how to start it. And this is where you could put like password protection. So you're going to go into your base files. You're going to locate your shooter games application right here and... Let me go ahead and change this to base files so you won't get confused. Base files. Go to base files, shooter games, and then binaries. So you have to enter your binaries, Windows 64, and here you are. This is where you're going to be starting your server. So you have to make a new batch file called startserver.bat, and we're going to go ahead and do so right now. Right-click, new, text document, and I'm going to go ahead and call this start server. And I think I could put .bat already, can I? Nope. If I put dot bat, it doesn't convert right away, but I could do that while saving it. So anyways, I'm going to double click this. Here it is. All right. It's a empty text document. 
and we're going to put in the second command code that I have on my website. And here it is. So start shootergame.exe, which is right here. I believe this is it. Start, yeah, shootergame.exe. This is the application that hosts your server. And then this is the island. I believe that's the map name session. And this is what you're going to be calling your server. You could call it a test server if you want to. You could call it SCM owns if you want to. This is the name of your server, which will appear on the unofficial list. But there is a lot of unofficial servers, okay? So you're going to have to really try to find your server here. And, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call it, you know, you just put in your username so you can know where it's at. I'm going to put SC Moans is cool, right? So I could find that if I'm looking for a server and I see one called SC Moans is cool, then I know that one's mine. All right, so now that we have changed the name of our session, so now we could find it easier. Now let's go into the most trickiest part of this video, the ports. Now, if you don't know how to port forward your video game or any sort of video game, you don't know how to port forward at all, then you have to watch my video on how to port forward. I did it for Minecraft, and it's exactly the same for this video game. It goes over how to port forward your video games. And these are the ports you're going to have to port forward with UDP and TCP. I believe both of them, uh, as, uh, just, yeah, you have to port both TCP and UDP. Those are both the ports. And it is 27015 and 27016. So, yeah, you're going to have to port forward these two, and I have a tutorial on that in case you guys need to watch it. If it is out to date and you guys think it doesn't work for this tutorial, I'll make a new video on how to port forward these ports in a new video coming up like tomorrow or the next day. It is step number seven, port forward. So you have to make sure you know how to port forward in order to continue on with this tutorial. And if you get yourself any errors, then you probably didn't port forward right. So make sure you check out the tutorial in the video description below or the annotation right here. So now that you port forward your game correctly, I hope you guys did by watching my video. Now we can continue on with the next step, step number eight. So remember, you have to port 27015 and 27016. All right, so now we're, we're going to have to uh, save this, file save as, and we're going to save this inside here, Windows uh, 64. We're going to save it, all files, and put .bat next to it. I have to do it again. .bat, there we go. Press enter. And now here it is. Check this out. So now it's going to appear right here, start server. And if you double click this, here you go. And it's going to give you a Windows security update or something. And you have to allow access. And that is it right here. In case you got yourself an error, it will say at the very top, an error. It will say like unable to find ports or unable to listen or something. If you got yourself an error, then please um, let me know in the comments below and that pretty much means you didn't port forward your ports correctly That means I have to make a new updated video on how to port forward if you didn't watch my last one and or if it didn't work for you So I would probably have to make a new port forward video But um, that's probably the only tricky part in this entire video is to port forward um, So if you got any errors here, then um, let me know and I'll get back to you and also Here's another thing too. You have to wait for your server to fully 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 get finished with its uh, startup because this is not it this is not the full startup of your server it will have to take i think another 500 seconds i believe that's like uh i don't know what's 500 seconds five minutes or so until another little section here uh will display saying full startup was successful it will say right now in just a couple of minutes it's going to say startup is successful okay so this is what i was talking about you have to wait just a little bit more it took about uh, i'm gonna have to say seven minutes for it to have its full startup complete this is the line of text you're going to get full startup uh, 385 seconds and it's going to say number of cores that it's using i don't know how to change the number of cores i think there is a setting in there uh, somewhere in here that you get to change the number of cores you want to use your uh, server with but as you can see once you see this the full startup that means you're able to join your server and the session name is going to be called SCM owns is cool. And that's what's inside this text document or this batch file. It says session name SCM owns is cool. So now you can start up your server or start up your video game and tell your friends to find the server. And also once you log into the server, make sure that you favorite your server. So you don't have to look in the unofficial list all over again. I'm going to go ahead and launch the video game just to show you that I'm going to be able to find the server. Or wait a minute, I forgot to tell you something. When you um, update the server, it will uh, you will have to pretty much re-log into your Steam account because um, I guess something happens in the Steam CMD 
in which you have to sign in again because you use your Steam uh, Step 2 verification. So you can't play the game online right now. You have to log out of your username. So you have to go up here, change user, log out, and you have to re-sign into your client of Steam because you had to download this entire uh, video game. So you're going to have to re-sign in to your Steam account. Okay, so now that I am connecting to my account, now you're going to see your friends list and stuff, and you can see who's playing on Arc. And what you could do is go ahead and press play. You could also log out too, in case you don't want your friends seeing you that you're playing, but then that's pretty weird. You know, why add them if you're not going to want to play with them? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here to Arc, press play, just to see that it does work. And I'll show you exactly where you can find your server. Now it's going to be pretty laggy because I'm not recording with my capture card or anything like that. And check, look at this. It's already under my favorites. So S. Simons is cool. It's under my favorites. But if you go under unofficial, try to search for it. If you see, it's right there. S. Simons is cool. So yeah, and you can click favorite once you find it. Once you find it, click it, click favorite, and it'll stay under your favorites tab. And also, my friend is playing here under his friends. Ah, someone has a friend server. That's weird. But yeah, it'll be under your favorites if you save it there. All right, guys, so now I'm going to be going over some extra stuff that you want to know. Um, so I'm going to go over some extras, how to tweak the configs, how to add a password, and how to add an admin password so that you can have full access to your server. So let's go ahead and begin that now. So welcome to the extras tutorial. This is where I'm going to show you all the extra stuff that I had planned for you. And uh, you can only do all this once you have successfully started up your server and you can log into your server and everything seems to be working fine. But now you want to know how to set a server password and you want to know how to change the configs. Well, let me show you this. I'm going to go ahead and close the server using control C on Windows. And that's how to successfully close your server. It's control C. OK, and it will close. Uh, what I like to do is I like to right click the starter uh, start server dot bat and I like to go to edit all right to easily tweak it just like this and now what you want to do is you want to set this command right here server password so this is how you set a server password you go under session name all right and you go ahead and, and paste this right in and you'll see server password and the password well check this out you see that there's a question mark here. You have to remove that question mark. You cannot have two question marks in a row. And you have to make sure you put a question mark right here where your password is in between password and port because um, that's a space. So you have to space out every single thing. Like session name has to be spaced out. It has to be an individual thing. Server password has to be spaced out. So make sure you have one question mark in between these two, two functions, okay? So here's the server password. We're gonna go ahead and put that in right now. The password by default's password. We're gonna call it uh, cool with zeros. I don't know. That's how you want the password to be and your friends could log in with this password. So you have to make sure you share this with your friends. And now we're gonna want a server admin password. So let's go ahead and add that in right now. We're gonna copy the code. We're gonna go past the server password. It's gonna be right after the server password. We're gonna paste that in. Make sure that you add in a question mark right here in between the admin password and ports. Make sure you put in a, a question mark. Now the server admin password will be whatever you want. So this is something you're not going to share with your friends. So I'm going to put lol. I don't know. Whatever your password wants to be for an admin. There you go. So that's how to set a server password um, onto your server. So click file save and it should be able to update. Check this out. Um, if you want to access your server faster and you want to start it up faster, just go ahead and click create shortcut. So you can make yourself a shortcut, create shortcut, and you could have this onto your um, desktop. So if you double click it, now it's going to give you the opportunity to start your server super fast. Instead of going all the way through all these directories just to start your server, you can just make a shortcut of this uh, start server dot batch. So I'm going to go ahead and close this it's not I don't recommend to ever close your game while it's starting up or your server while it's starting up because then it's gonna take forever to relaunch but let me show you where to change your configs because this is something that's really necessary go to your arc server your base files shooter game configs and here it is default game user settings okay so this is the directory at the top double click this and you'll see that this is all of these settings you could change this to whatever you like I already had some preset uh, changes here and um, yeah this is basically my preset changes 
Um, it will be set to 1. 1.0 is going to be the default, but you could go ahead and change this to whatever you like. See, my X, my XP multiplier is 4.5 because you can level up faster in my server. The taming speed's a lot faster. So, you know, this is how you change literally everything. But if you're going to be changing the taming speed, do not uh, increase the dino, like, hunger, wherever it's at. Uh, I don't know where it's at. It's, it says dino heal. No. it say, Here it is. Dino character food uh, drain multiplayer never change this because if you change that then it's going to take forever for you to tame your dinos because they're never going to get hungry and you have to have your dino hungry if you want to tame it so yeah and then if you want more dinos in your world the dino count multiplayer you set it to three instead of one so you can have three times more dinos and pretty much you just change the configs now if you want to um let's say you want your dino to have more stamina and it doesn't drain as fast then you have to do what's opposite you can't put like 7.5 you have to make sure you go under 0 so 0 0.5 because by default it's 1.0 and if you want him to have more stamina when he runs change it to 0 0.7 or 0 0.5 so the closer it is to 0 the the slower it is to uh, drain and that is it for that so if you want more of daylight cycle you could increase the time of night to 3.5 so it cycles faster if you want night times to stay longer then put 0 0.5 whatever you want guys and click file save and that is how you change your uh, configs all right guys well hopefully this entire tutorial helped you out I have to edit this video into like a probably a reasonable 15 minutes um, if you have any problems post in the comments below I'll be looking out for any of your guys's comments and try to help you through your progress here of trying to set up your own server hopefully you guys did enjoy this tutorial and if you guys if it did help then please click that like button I'd really appreciate it and I'll see you guys in my next server tutorial or tutorial in general consider subscribing if you're new thanks for watching